Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Chapter 1, The Boy Who Lived Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4 Private Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people to expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious, because they just didn't hold up such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was big, beef man, hardly any neck although he did have a very large mustache. <coughs> Miss Dursley was thin and blonde and had a nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time in cranny over gardens fences, spying on the neighbors. The Dursley had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion there was no final bar anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret, and their greatest fears was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found about the Potters. Miss Potter and Miss Dursley, si sister, but they had met for several years. In fact, Miss Dursley pretended she didn't have a sister, <coughs> because her sister and her good for nothing husband were, uh, were as underslinged as it was possible to be. The Dursley shuddered to think what the neighbors would say if the Potters arrived in the street. The Dursleys knew that the Potters had a small son too, but they had never ever seen him. This boy was another good reason for keeping the potters away. They didn't want Dudley mixing with a child like that. When Miss Thir and Miss Dudley woke up on the dull gray Thursday, our story starts. There was nothing about the cloud sky outside to suggest that strange and mysterious things would be soon happening all over the country. Mr. Dudley hummed and he as he picked out his most boring tie for work, and Miss Dudley gasped away happily as she wrestled as screaming Dudley into her his high chair. <coughs> None of them noticed a large, tawny owl flutter past the window. At half past, past eight, Mr. Dudley picked up his briefcase, packed Miss Dudley on the check, cheek, and tried to kiss Dudley goodbye but missed it, because Dudley was now having a tantrum and throwing his cereal at the walls. Little tick, chattered Miss Dudley. Mr. Dudley, as he left the house, he got into his car and backed out the number first drive. It was on the corner of the street that he noticed the first sign of something peculiar. A cat reading a map. For a second, Mr. Dursley didn't realize what he had seen. Then he jerked his head around to look again. <coughs> there was a tab cat standing on the corner of the brief drive. But there wasn't a map in sight. What could have been what could have been seen thinking of? It must have been a trick of the light, Mr. Desert blinked and stared at the cat. It started back. As Mr. Desert drove around the corner and, and up the road, he watched the cat in his mirror. It was now reading the sign that said Private Drive. No, look at the sign. Cats couldn't read maps or signs. Mr. Desert gave himself a little shake and put the cat off, out his mind. As he drove towards town, he thought of nothing except a large order of drills he was hoping to get that day. But on, but on the edge of the town, drills were driven out of his mind by something else. As he sat in the usual morning traffic jam, he couldn't help noticing that there seemed to be a lot of strangely dressed people about. People in cloaks. Mr. Dudley couldn't bear people dressed in funny clothes. They get up to the town on younger people. 